Oh. <laughs> okay. Hi, hello. My name is Lainey, and we are not going to talk about the fact that I kind of look like a soccer mom today. Okay? Okay. And if you don't already know, I am a cosplayer, amateur makeup artist, and YouTuber, and I like to talk about things such as my own creations, D&D, books, and so much more. And in today's video, we are going to be dyeing and styling my Jinx wig from Arcane. Kicker is, I have no clue what I'm doing half the time because I only watched like a five minute YouTube tutorial. So, I really need to calm down. I had like three cups of coffee. Without further ado, let's just jump right into the video. All right, so first and foremost, let's talk supplies. I'm starting off with the Estrella wig and ponytail attachment from Epic Cosplay Wigs, both in the color Classic White as my base wig. And I used about a bottle and a half of the synthetic grit dye, both in the color Sapphire Blue. And then I got out all the basic supplies used for the stovetop dyeing method, which I will go over how to do in just a second. You'll need a stovetop safe bucket and a mixing spoon. This is concentrated dish soap, which I ended up forgetting to use, but it worked out fine, but you know, whatever. Gloves and then the wig and dye you'll be using. The first step in every dyeing process is to bring to a simmer enough water to fully submerge your wig or fabric into. And while that takes its sweet time warming up, let's quickly go over the stovetop dye method. I'm sure there are plenty of other YouTube tutorials that can better explain this process, but in my own words, the stovetop dyeing method is pretty self-explanatory, honestly. Synthetic fibers are more likely to take to the dye under constant heat, unlike more natural fibers such as cotton. So instead of dumping a whole bunch of boiling water into a plastic bucket and hoping for the best, like someone in this video, we instead use a stainless bucket on the stovetop to keep the heat at a constant degree. Anyways, like I was saying earlier, the part of dyeing something that takes the most time is just waiting for the water to simmer. So prepare to wait for a while. While I waited for mine to do its thing, I just sat around for a bit while realizing this might be a good time to comb through the wig because I thought it was a great idea to put on the wig the day before. Quick side note, don't do this if you are using a very long wig like mine. This was my first time having a wig of this length, so it never occurred to my small pea brain that even if you breathe on this wig, it will tangle. Once the water began to boil, I brought the heat down a tad, poured in about a whole bottle of dye, and did some test strips. I waited about one minute, pulled out the hair, rinsed it, and found that I got the color first try, so next was dumping the ponytail clip in. I once again waited a minute and yanked it out of the dye once done. And if you listen carefully, you may just hear the screams of my fingertips as I burn off my fingerprint because I didn't realize my delicate little human hands aren't heat resistant. Don't be me and get heat resistant gloves. <laughs> By the time it was the wig's turn, a lot of the dye originally in the pot had been used, but I didn't realize that until after I dumped the wig into the sink. So I ended up adding half a bottle more of the dye and waited a few more minutes until the color of the wig matched the color of the clip. The color is a little splotchy, but that's just what I get for dyeing a wig almost as tall as I am in one go. But you can't even tell unless you look really closely, and at that point, you will be in wig whacking distance. So keep your distance. The five foot rule does exist for a reason. I rinsed everything in cold water, towel dried the wig until it wasn't dripping wet and began to comb through this monstrosity. This took forever. About five hours in fact, and yes that does include like a 30 minute break that I took to ponder why I wasted my time watching the Wheel of Time show, but you get the point. Once I finished combing through the wig, I waited for it to completely dry and went over it with a hair straightener to help make the rest of the work just a tad easier on myself. But then that was the end of day one. Welcome back. Surprise, it is uh, me from the future. The clips that you just watched are me from yesterday. Uh, this is day two and uh, hold on. This is where we're at now. So the last time you probably saw this, I was straightening the wig for the first time. That only got me so far before it started to tangle once again. So all that I have to do today is uh, one, I need to re-detangle the wig and I'm going to set all of the wig fibers with hairspray so that it will stop tangling so easily. I also need to re-straighten the wig, specifically this top area that you can see is like really fuzzy. And then last but not least, I get to style the wig so that I can leave this nightmare that I am in. Anyway, I need to stop procrastinating. So, here we go. In the grand scheme of things, there was no need for me to try and iron through all those wefts a second time, and instead should have just directly moved on to steaming the top of the wig. One, the wig would continue to tangle and not no matter how many times I come through it. And two, this second pass through took hours. So much so that I didn't film much of it, but trust me, you didn't miss anything. Just, just trust me. Anyways, once that very unnecessary process was finished, I quickly braided the hair. Way to go, past Lainey, because this was actually very helpful.
day three focused on detangling the wefts, which somehow ended up tangling even more than the wig. I'll get to that later. Today was focusing on hiding the back of the wig cap. Like I mentioned a second ago, the ponytail clip that I was using as extra wefts, I spent hours desperately trying to detangle it, but after everything, I went to pick it up and it just immediately turned back into what I've deemed as the tangle beast. I was, I was very mad and could care less about it at that point, so I chopped at it until I got the necessary wefts required for the wig. Fun fact, the rest of the ponytail now resides in the back of my closet where I wish to never see it again. Getting back on track, the last thing I did that day was hand sew in all the wefts. I finally got around to seaming the top of the wig so that everything sat nicely and I also redid the braids just so that they looked nicer. After braiding the wig, I tried it on and called it good, but we're not finished yet. Day five was dedicated to making all the screws and whatnots displayed in Jinx's hair, which I did so out of two and eight millimeter crop foam. The, uh long things. And her hair are just rectangles with the sides glued together and some added detail pieces on the ends, while the screws are just two layers of 8mm foam glued together. Everything was sanded, primed, I ran out of plus two dope so I opted for Mod Podge this time, and painted and weathered to get the final result. I don't know how I did it, but the wig is finished and that's all that matters. I've always held a lot of respect for wig smiths or just people who work with wigs in general, but after this experience, Jesus Christ, I am honestly a little worried for their sanity. With the wig all set and done, that marks the end of today's video. If you've made it this far into the video, uh, you have all of my thanks. And if you want to learn how I made this, this, <laughs> I have a highlight over on my Instagram dedicated to how I made Jinx's costume, and I have a few TikToks explaining how I made this Jinx's blaster over on my TikTok, both of which I will have linked down below. If you like this video, please feel free to like, comment, or even subscribe for my content such as this. But with that all being said, I have to go find my long lost sister and go terrorize her and force her girlfriend. So hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, everyone.